بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كنت أريدين فرم من ما لا زال جواه القرآن دي جوز القرآن every سورت الزخرف يعني ما مازال شو 16 verses 16 جوز في بل دي دي 16 89. The uh, themes there would include uh, uh, creation, which is really uh, one of the uh, themes that Imam Ghazali uh, chose many uh, times in the uh, previous uh, surahs. Almost all of them, not all of them, but almost all of them. And uh, there's a reminder of the uh, natural uh, phenomena that uh, in, as blessings, as uh, a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it for us really to uh, um, a reminder of the uh, of the rain, of animals, of even that we have been guided to uh, have uh, ships at the time for us it will go on in terms of the uh, uh, transportation. And in the second uh, group of, uh, of verses, um, there's uh, um, again the notion of uh, attributing uh, a son to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, being uh, covered again. And of course, the, the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who uh, uh, it's unbefitting, uh, the, nothing's like unto him. He, uh, he has no need, there will never be uh, a child in the way it is, uh, the, this theology developed in more than one culture and uh, religion, but mostly today is you know associated with uh, christian uh, theology of the the trinity uh, where jesus christ peace upon him is considered the uh, son of god and goes back again to um, asking the same question that it was asked in, in verse uh, 9 it's, it's asked again in verse 87 where in خلق السماوات والأرض لا يقولون خلق الله العزيز العليم إن إيت السبب من سألت من خلقه لا يقولون الله فأنا يفكون سبحان الله. But we will try to go over the surah and see the larger context and the themes that are mentioned in this uh, surah, beginning with the first verse, which is still uh, these are one of the surahs where uh, it begins with حميم سورة الزخرف. And of course, this it will be followed, and it is followed by uh, mentioning of the book of Revelation, Wal Kitab al Mubin. Here it is uh, taking oath by the the book, by the clear book, by the by the Quran, and uh, it does mention the Quran in the third verse. Certainly, we have made it a Quran in Arabic, so perhaps you will understand. In Najana Quran Arabian, laallakum taqilun. وَإِنَّهُ فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ لَدَيْنَا وَإِنَّهُ فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ لَدَيْنَا لَعَلِيٌّ حَكِيمٌ Now, أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ uh, This is the uh, preserved uh, tablet, the Lawh al-Mahfuz. And uh, the, uh, it will be the, uh, the, the now. But reference uh, to the uh, the the uh, preserve uh, the Quran Kareem Kitab Maknoon elsewhere of course in the uh, Quran. But the Quran is found in a book, and here we know that it is in the The in Arabic. Uh, you can say um and you can say im and this is the um, reading the recitation of uh, Hamza and Kisai and the rest uh, the rest of them uh, 
they have the uh, short uh, uh, the dhamma really the uh, oh, um, sound Uh, permanent, but we have again uh, some uh, some. It's a reference to uh, the book. It's a reference also to the uh, like when Nahula. Quran itself. That it will not be, it will not be uh, subject to the vagaries of transmission and uh, what have you. Uh, and indeed, uh, it is in the master record with us. When of Umm al-Kitab al-Dayna al hakim highly esteemed, uh, the rich in wisdom. Should we then turn the Quranic reminder away from you? Quranic, of course, inserted because of dhikr here. Also, the uh, uh, should we then turn this uh, reminder away from you simply because because you have been a transgressing people and to the and the, the more uh, mocked they were uh, rejected and this is why they were subjected to severe punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we destroy those who were far mightier than these these meaning the Meccans the examples of their predecessors have already been related and then this is verse uh, 9 which is uh, uh, part part of what imam Azari has selected 9 to uh, 14 subhanallah the uh, at least these uh, idols to be intercessors on on their behalf to bring them closer to Allah they they knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the universe if you ask them who created if you ask them if you the Prophet وسلم, who created the heavens and the earth they would certainly say the Almighty all knowing did he is the one who has laid out the earth for you and set it in pathways or set in a pathways for you so that you may, you may find your way. It is he who uh, sends the, down the rain from the sky in perfect measure with which we give life to a lifeless land. And so you will be brought forth from the grave. It's uh, this theme of reviving the dead. Baldatan maitan, not baldatan mayitatan, baldatan maitan. Al mayt is the one who passed away already. Al mayt is the one who is going to pass away. Uh, mortal, if you will. And uh, this notion. Biqadr. So to revive, that's basically the perfect measure. But people should remember. Remember the flood of the people of uh, that hit the people of uh, Noah, Nuh alayhi salam. So sometimes, so basically the sky and the earth, the sky. Uh, dumped on them all the water that it uh, had and the uh, earth brought up uh, the uh, water that it has stored so both waters uh, 
including the bodies of water that already existed. All of them combined cause a, uh, a flood uh, that did not leave anyone behind except those who were on the ark. I have noticed that sometimes we talk about the right now there are hurricanes you might say this is the season for hurricanes but the if so uh, massive all the way from florida to north carolina so there are hurricanes and they are loaded with uh, with water and uh, there was already uh, a few days ago a hurricane that hit florida and the uh, the east the east coast uh, mostly in the uh, southeast and uh, so sometimes it is that water which basically revives and sometimes it's the other way uh, around. Even um, it is much more. We are facing uh, changes in weather patterns and uh, we are contributing to this through fossil uh, fuel, which is, uh, I don't know, it's almost like when you speak about countries that contribute very little to global warming compared to the industrial uh, nations. So it's a luxury to say this. So we cannot really speak about, uh, we can, it's not really the, but we, we need an alternative, an alternative model for, uh, for the relationship between the North and the South. in order to have uh, uh, a different uh, environment. Also, the behavior of people is related. Uh, in the Quran, if you have a drought, um, seeking, uh, repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking forgiveness is related to, also to sending the uh, rain uh, there are different cultures, different religions who have prayers for rain. We do. Uh, we do that. In fact, uh, the uh, pulpit of Burhan al uh, right on the edge of the uh, upper uh, courtyard, literally between the Dome of the Rock and the Qibli, just talk to the uh, Qibli, you have what we call the balance, and then the stairs that lead to the lower courtyard, uh, leading to the fountain and then to the Qibli Mosque. To your right, there will be uh, a beautiful, very beautiful pulpit in the open, in the courtyard. In the past, it has been used for... Uh, Salat al istisqa for uh, uh, for this prayer for um, asking Allah subhanahu wa taala to send um, uh, rain. Also, our behavior. وقلت استغفر ربكم إنه كان غفار يرسل السماء عليكم مدرارا. So also, استغفار and rain are. Uh, have that kind of uh, uh, relationship then the this uh, the next verse uh, he is the one and he is the one who created you and made for you ships and animals to ride uh, The animals are created, but he availed these animals for us to use for riding. And he inspired us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make these uh, ships. And what you see today, 
all the shipping uh, industry. Uh, and of course, well, well, there are uh, there are uh, indirect references, references to things that will be also uh, created the uh, other than what we know. Uh, for example, uh, let's say aeroplanes. So we do ride these uh, animals, and what do we do uh, once we do this? We have a prayer for riding the animals. We use the same uh, prayer when we ride our cars. وَالَّذِي خَلَقَ الْأَزْوَاجَ كُلَّهَا وَجَعَلْ لَكُمْ مِنَّ الْفُلْكِ وَالْأَنْعَامِ مَا تَرْكَبُونَ لِتَسْتَوُوا عَلَى ظُهُورِ ثُمَّ تَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ رَبِّكُمْ إِذَا اسْتَوَيْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ وَتَقُولُوا And this is now the dua, this is now the supplication. سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي سَخَّرَ لَنَا هَذَا وَمَا كُنَّ لَهُ مُقْرِمِينَ وَإِنَّ إِلَى رَبِّنَا لَمَنْ مُقَلِبُونَ That's where the, the first group of verses uh, end. Uh, which, and it's a beautiful thing to remember uh, when a mode of transportation is availed uh, to you. Oh, there's a dua for traveling. And I see that people, uh, you know, some people are more keen to uh, make these prayers when they uh, take the, uh, when they fly, compared to when they they are on uh, on earth. We are not the only ones who have, a, as Muslims, who have a prayer for uh, traveling, for riding. It's a beautiful thing to remember. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala availed all this to, you know, for us. But also it has been availed to, you know, uh, for us. You don't use the mode of transportation to go uh, and on, upon arrive, when you arrive at your destination, you go there so that you will, uh, you would commit uh, sin or you behave in a way that is, uh, cannot be reconciled with uh, uh, with the Islamic worldview, which is based on revelation, really. The, uh, as I said earlier, between 14 and 80, that's a big uh, gap, if you will. And there are so many things that we can uh, talk about. The uh, next, uh, number 15, it is though it does speak about those who uh, attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala part of uh, what he has created part of his creation and uh, there were those who, who described the angel uh, daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while they would not really like the uh, having daughters we have examples from the past we have examples from recent history recent history china limiting families to one child so many uh, chinese families aborted um, when it when it's really when it became known that the fetus uh, was a girl uh, and this led to imbalance in the number of uh, boys and girls in society now they give up the one child because they, they saw how destructive this was. In the pre-Islamic period, there was infanticide. Uh, they killed the daughters, they buried them alive. For, for them, uh, it was not a state policy. There were no states. In fact, this is one part of the world that never, uh, never witnessed. Uh, we talk about the Arabian Peninsula as a whole. There was never... Uh, a unifying central government, uh, a state uh, uh, that covered the Arabian Peninsula. There were tribes, even warring tribes. And the first, the first state, if you will, that was uh, the uh, the uh, upon really uh, uh, performing the migration from uh, Mecca to Medina. Uh, when the Prophet uh, this is the Hijra uh, in the year 622 and you know out of a sudden you have something new in 
the Arabian uh, Peninsula. So the uh, pre-Islamic uh, Arabs did not really appreciate the Gaels. It is true that we still have uh, sexism in Prague. Even the most uh, liberal societies in Scandinavia, there is still uh, male chauvinism and there is still sexism. And, okay. And I think if we, we, we need to go back to see how the Quran, how the Prophet changed the status of, uh, of women, uh, elevated the status of women. Uh, just think about the Prophet This is 1400 years ago. There is no Western feminine and uh, women uh, could inherit and uh, the inheritance varies. Uh, sometimes less, sometimes equal, sometimes more than uh, males in the in the family, depending on the uh, who uh, remains alive and uh, in the uh, in the family. So they have inheritance. Her financial identity is different from her husband. Her money is her money. The Quran speaks clearly about whether she wants to uh, give some money to her husband. Uh, absolutely, she has the freedom. If she wholeheartedly gives you something, that's fine. Otherwise, her money is her money. Your money is your money as a family. The male, the husband. Uh, so there was a big change in uh, out of a sudden women participated in all aspects of uh, the life of the uh, society and think about the Prophet ﷺ, how he behaved at home uh, this is very liberating I love these uh, hadith uh, uh, one of them he uh, did uh, uh, needlework patching his own clothing he, uh, he used to put things in order. Uh, he was an orderly uh, person. Uh, in the language of today, he did not throw the pyjama on the floor. Uh, there were, you know, simply as a, as a metaphor. Uh, he used to cut the meat for the family. He used to... The, the, the hadith that I love uh, most he, the Prophet ﷺ, used to do house chores. This is someone, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was changing history and it is still changing. What we go through, Islamophobia today, and they went through from day one. And it was probably uh, more severe than uh, if we think about the details. But remember, the issue is the status of women. The cultural norm, there is a cultural norm in every society. Again, uh, liberating women, if we think about the Islamic paradigm, I'm not think, thinking about the uh, Western feminism or Western radical feminism that sees men in the... Uh, uh, Animosity, as if, like, literally, there, were, there are those of them who are um, militant in their language and position vis-a-vis -vis, uh, vis -vis men. And uh, we do need this uh, Islamic uh, notion. This is not the time to go over all the details, but at least people should remember that we do have that. And it was very liberating, not, not a borrowed paradigm. Whenever one of them is given the good news of what they attribute to the most compassion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his face grows gloomy, those people. And what, what good news? It's about basically be having it, um, a daughter. They would not, they don't like it. Uh, so as I said, the uh, that, that pre-Islamic 
position, it, it continued. It is still there. Not this is not Islamic. This is it is un-Islamic. It is there. Uh, I remember that uh, one lady who uh, used to come to uh, give birth at the Red Crescent Hospital in East Jerusalem. This is before the wall, the uh, separation wall, the apartheid wall before the checkpoints, before uh, also before 1994. And her name in the in her ID in her ID, in literally her name is is Mikna. Uh, her father, when she was born, uh, and she was you know he had a number of uh, daughters, and he Zmikna would mean. Uh, we have had enough, and this is not fair to name your daughter. We have had enough. Literally, this is exactly the, uh, the the meaning of her name. This is not fair. This is not fair, and this is very un-Islamic. Do they attribute to him those who are brought up in fineries and are not commanding in dispute? أو ما ينشأ في الحلية وهو في الخصام غير مبين. And they uh, render the labeled the angels who are servants of the most compassionate as female. Did they witness their creation? Their statement would be recorded, and they will be questioned. وجعلوا الملائكة الذين هم عباد الرحمن إناثا أشهد خلقهم ستكتب شهادات ويسألون. In as the, the verses are many between 14 and 18, at one point there is mention, verse 26, uh, mentioning Ibrahim, uh, Prophet Abraham, when he addressed his own father and his people and telling them that he has nothing to do with their idol uh, worshipping. Remember, oh, remember when Abraham, when Prophet Abraham, alayhi salam, Declare to his father and his people, I am totally free of whatever gods you worship. Totally free. Uh, it's simply uh, dismissing there. He was an iconoclast and later on, he basically uh, destroyed their idols and kept the largest one and he... Uh, Mockingly, of course, trying to send a message. He accused that largest idol of destroying the rest, and he knew that it cannot. In fact, it sounds like, you know, in any barrel, disowning really what they were, uh, what they were doing. And they, uh, the, the uh, pagans who existed at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they asked whether or not uh, this Quran would be revealed to someone who uh, has a, a better status than the Prophet So now it's not about the message, now it's about why the Prophet. They exclaimed, if only this Quran was revealed to a great man from one of the uh, two cities, referring to Mecca and Ta'if. Ta'if is a uh, about 100 kilometers, a little bit more than uh, about 55 miles, 60 miles. Uh, and it's a high mountain, um, nice weather. Uh, and there's a story about Taif. Uh, the Prophet, وسلم, the, uh, they did. Uh, when he went to Taif Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, calling them to become Muslims, they sent their kids uh, uh, after him and uh, they uh, threw uh, stones on him and he bled. Nevertheless, he uh, prayed for them, not against them. He did not curse them, he did not. And of course, uh, almost in no time, Taif became Muslim and it's a place where uh, because of the weather, the
there is desert and there's heat Taif is a cool place and they grow flowers and they extract perfume from these uh, uh, flowers I think we uh, move to uh, number 80 so that we uh, conclude this reading with these uh, verses 80 to 88 <laughs> Or do they think that we do not hear their evil thoughts, their thoughts and secret talks? Yes, we do. And our messenger, angels are in their presence recording it all. We are never alone. This is for sure. If you have a dark side, rest assured that uh, and you do something um, nasty thinking that people you know people might not be aware of what you are doing but there are always angels who are recording what uh, you are doing and if you are doing some doing something good and you don't want people to know about it it's also recorded so not all the things that are done uh secret you know, kind of in privacy and if you have keep it as a secret uh, some of this is very 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 good uh, you don't you want to give um, to me you know charity to uh, a widow for example uh, with uh, with uh, young children and you don't want to, people to know about it you could still do it and you know in a very private way say uh, meaning the Prophet وسلم, قل, addressing the Prophet وسلم, if the most compassionate really had offspring, I would be the first worshipper. Uh, offspring, really, it's walad. Uh, it could be offspring, but could be one particular walad, uh, attributing a son to the uh, to the to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Though here they have mentioned also the daughters. Mm. Uh, describing the angels as daughters but followed after that subhana rabbis samawat al-ard rabbil arsh amma yasifun glorified is the lord of the heavens and the earth the lord of the throne far above what they claim so let them indulge in falsehood and amuse themselves until they face their day their day the day the day of judgment which they have been warned of it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is he who is the only God in the heavens uh, and the only God on the earth for he is the all wise all knowing I think we should really remember الذي في السماء إله وفي الأرض إله وهو الحكيم العليم وهو الذي في السماء إله وفي الأرض إله. This is not about physical being in the inside what he uh, created. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is uh, uh, without beginning, and there was no no such universe that he created the uh, universe, and he is in that state. He continues to be in that state. Not in you don't attribute space and time because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created space and time. And what is what is time? We talk about movement in uh, in space. And this our solar system, our sun, but it will be every sun. And if it reaches its destination in the sense of uh, when it ends, that's also when uh, time as we know it also ends. And blessed is the one to whom belongs the kingdom of the heavens and the earth and everything in between. With him alone is the knowledge of the hour. 
وعنده علم الساعة something that we have it has been mentioned before in the Quran it is mentioned in the Hadith we have mentioned this in previous uh, readings it is kept it is kept because this is if had people known exactly when it's the, their own uh, the time of their own death or the the hour uh, it would change their uh, their behavior and to him you will all of course be returned to those who those objects of worship of course they cannot basically they cannot intercede they invoke uh, these besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala besides him they have no power to intercede except those who testify to the truth knowingly and if you ask them again uh, who created them, they will certainly say Allah again. How can they then be deluded from the truth? And though we have you know, 88 and 89, the end of the, of the surah, Allah is aware of the Prophet's cry, O oh my Lord, indeed, these are people who persist in disbelief. وَقِيلِهِ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّهَا أُولَاءِ قَوْمٌ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ فَاصْفَحْ عَنْهُمْ وَقُلْ سَلَامٌ فَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ So bear with them and respond with peace. They will soon come to know. Salam is also when you address the, uh, the ignorant. وَإِذَا خَطَمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا they will come to know. With this, we conclude uh, this reading. Reading from Surah Al Zakhruf. The next reading from Surah Al Dukhan, only four verses, but of course, we will look at the context, inshallah. Until then, Subhanakallah wa hamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa tubarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.